Hey, so I know that we've talked about transgender, but I felt like it is time to talk about intersex, um, which is separate from transgender. So first off, intersex people are not transgender people. Transgender people are people who um, have more of a psychological issue that they need to work through. Um, it's something that definitely needs to be addressed with counseling, and we need to take it seriously and get them the help that they need. And we need to be there for them and be accepting of them as they as they try to struggle and figure out who they are. I mean, it's it's a hard time for them, and uh, so that's transgender. Now, what is intersex? Intersex is are people who have physical abnormalities of, of various kinds. Um, just like some people are born blind or some people are born um, handicapped. Intersex people are born with um, improperly formed genitals and other um, traits. Uh, yeah, and so they don't really fit the traditional definitions. Sometimes they can have partially formed parts of both. Sometimes, um, you know, there's one's more dominant. Sometimes they're both kind of there. It's just either way, um, intersex is kind of an umbrella term that covers um, people with different physical abnormalities involving um, involving gender that makes it harder to categorize them in what box. Um, now, there's a few things to remember. First off, they're still people. They still have hopes and dreams, just like everybody else, just like transgender people do. Okay, The problem is not in, in not understanding. The problem is in not wanting to understand. Okay, like for instance, I don't perfectly understand intersex. I don't perfectly understand transgender. Um, and there's still some things that, that I kind of have to wrestle with. And you know what? That's okay. I don't have to have all the answers. But what I do have to have is a, a willingness to learn and listen and share God's love. That That is what's required of me by God. Okay? Um, yeah, and remember, it's not our job to bring up difficult Topics just for the sake of irritating people. You know, like, oh, well, if I don't tell people that homosexuality is wrong, then all those gays, they'll just take over. Uh, what? I'll never forget the day that I was watching a, a, a message, a sermon, and the pastor was talking about how we needed to round up all of the homosexuals, I guess, in the world, or maybe he was just talking about America, I don't know, and put them in their own specially allocated plot. I don't remember if it was I don't remember if it was an island or if it was a fenced in area and airdrop them food. Some people are just out there. Anyways, so remember intersex people are still people. Don't treat them any different, don't treat them any lesser, okay? Um, the problem is in trying to go to them and tell them what they need to do without even trying to understand them what they're feeling um you know, being there for them as you try to work out their confusion. And, and I mean, what would you do if you didn't fit in this category or this category and you're supposed to fit in one of these two categories? And unlike transgender people who, you know, are just confused, you're confused, but for a whole different reason. Things aren't how they should be. How do you, how do you focus on that? How do you do that? How do you... How do you deal with this? Genetically, I was born as a man, but because my body didn't produce this chemical, my penis never formed, so physically, I'm a, a woman. What, what am I? And then when they go to the church, although the church says as well, God created the male and female. Well, yes, but he also created them to not sin. He also created them to live in the Garden of Eden, and for sicknesses to not be a thing. So, obviously, we've fallen from that standard. Obviously. So let's remember all those things. Um, they are still made by God. They still have needs. This is incredibly important, okay? Now, I'm focused less in this lesson about proving who's right or who's wrong or what, how you should feel about them or whatever. I'm more focused on loving them. And in hindsight, I wish I would have focused more on that about a lot of other um, 
a lot of other issues. Uh, so anyways, with intersects, they're still made by God. Remember that. They are still made by God. It's not like God was making people and then, oh, you know what, I, I, I need to go to the bathroom. And, oh, whoops, that one kind of messed up while I was gone. It wasn't like that. Even though they have um, defects or whatever you want to call them, that's a very offensive term, but let's, for the sake of clarity, let's just call it a defect. Um, you know, that's just basically saying, okay, so if they have a defect of any kind, you know, hey, God doesn't love them. Well, what about people who have mental defects like depression or, or anxiety? What about people who have other physical defects like blindness? I mean, that's not quite fair. Um, we are all made in the image of God, and um, we uh, are all made by God, and he loves all of us. Now, it's hard for us to carry our temporary burdens to this life, but remember this, they are temporary. Remember that. Um, you may not have farmed things, and you may want to have kids, and that just might not be physically possible for you, but... I, I will say this, that this life is temporary, and in the resurrection, you'll be given a new glorified God, body, and it won't be like your like your body is now. Um, so, intersex people still have needs. Um, don't look down on them as less. And people can really tell when you're sickened or grossed out, grossed, grossed out, grossed out by them. People can really tell that. So you really want to try and work through this. You know what I mean? Now, there are some times when you won't get a second chance. If you leave a bad taste in their mouth, like, that's just, you lost your opportunity. And if that's the case, it sucks, but there's nothing you can do about it. So don't focus on regrets. Just focus on moving forward. And maybe apologize to them and just try to do better in the future. Um, God allowed them to be born like that, and he has a plan for them. It's not like, okay, well, you have a, you have a, you have a birth defect so that... It means God doesn't have a plan for you. Now, in the Old Testament, a priest had to be physically um, perfect. And the reason for that, the reason for that was a, was closely related to the reason why an animal couldn't, that was going to be sacrificed couldn't have had a defect. To emphasize that God was holy. It doesn't mean that God loved them any less. It was just to prove a point about God's holiness so that we would understand. So with that being, in hindsight, uh, with that, said, we know that God isn't petty. And we also know that the law has been put away. And so remember that. God still has a plan for you. That has Your physical makeup has absolutely no difference in the fact that God has a plan for you. That's how that is. When Paul, when Paul said there's no, there's no longer male or female, slave or free, Jew or Gentile, I think that perfectly summarizes with sick or not sick. I just don't think I just don't think there's any reason to assume from scripture that um, intersex people can't uh, should expect any less in their lives from God. In fact, the opposite. People who are born with 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 problems um, of different kind, not just physical but mental and those kinds of things, they oftentimes learn about God and know God in a deeper way than other people are able to. Because if there aren't problems in somebody's life, they aren't able to rise to the occasion and learn from God in those situations. See, trials are actually a benefit for us. And this is a difficult thing for you to have to live with. I will not I will not deny that. But it's also difficult for transgender people to feel so confused about what they are. I was watching this one video where there's this there was this teenage boy who was trying to say that he was a wolf in every way except for his physical body. And he actually seemed to believe it. See what I mean? Like some people are just born with 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 things, with problems, and it's our job to help them and to help them find God. Okay, remember that. Okay, so God allowed them to be born like that. Remember that because God is sovereign, and just because He allows something doesn't mean that it's out of His control. Okay, for instance, in the book of Job, He allowed Satan to do something. That doesn't mean that Job was out of His hands. God already knew what would happen. He was already in control of the situation. Satan thought he was getting an upper hand on Job, but he didn't. Um, Matthew 19, 12. It talks about this. Um, it talks... Well, I'll just read it. It'll take me like five seconds. It says, For there are eunuchs who were born that way from their mother's room, and there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men. Okay, now, now pay attention to that first part. 
that were born that way from their mother's womb. You know, a eunuch is someone who's been castrated so that they don't seize power, right? So how can you be born castrated? Well, that takes us to intersex. Some people are born this way, and there are eunuchs who are made eunuchs by men. Some people have been physically changed either violently or with consent. Um, and there are also eunuchs who made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. And this isn't necessarily cutting off your junk. This could also be um, just deciding to stay celibate. Um, he who is to accept this, let him accept it. Um, it's a hard thing to accept. It, it steps on people's toes, but that's the way it is. There are effects of the fall in the world all around us. Now, people who are experiencing the effects of the fall don't need to be constantly reminded that the reason why they're having their problems is because of that. Do you go up to someone struggling with cancer and you say, hey, you're going with cancer because of the fall? No, that's a really mean thing to say, and they're already struggling for hope. So why should you go to an intersex person and constantly remind them that the reason why they don't have a per uh, they aren't in perfect physical health is because they they were born into a fallen world? Like you got to be more empathetic than that. Um, so, but still, the, the the truth is that we are all going to have different struggles. Some of us are going to have health problems. Some of us are going to have mental problems. Some of us are going to have physical problems, cancer, sickness, mental, physical difficulties. That's the bad side of living in a fallen world. But the good side is that there's hope, and we won't always live like this. The best way to reach transgender people is to love them, to serve them, to, to establish relationships, rather than going to them expecting for them to just convert to your mindset. The, the Roman Catholic Church had this model that they did in the medieval ages. Basically, the idea was you convert to how we act, how we dress, how we think, and then you can be welcomed into the church. But there was a different model established by St. Patrick when he went uh, to evangelize uh, over the water. What he did was he instead welcomed people into community and loved them. And the rest just kind of followed. And I will say this, when you're, when you're friends with someone, it's easier for you to be able to say something. If I go up to a stranger and say, I don't think you should treat your kid like that, they're going to be like, okay, but out of my life. If I go up to a friend and say, look... I know you're good. You're good. You're a good parent. Okay. You just need to be sure that you may be calmed down before you decide to give your child any kind of punishment. Maybe just just calm down for a minute. So I mean, that that's different. And they're probably going to listen to me more if I'm a friend than if I'm not a friend. So remember that. Uh, okay. Um, the best way to reach intersex people is to love them, to serve them, and to establish relationships. There are going to be people who make it into heaven who are transgender. There are people who are going to make it into heaven who are addicts, who were alcoholics, who were... But there's going to be people who did not make it into heaven, who went to church their whole life, who were gossips, slanderers, and angry people. I'm not saying that because it makes me happy. I'm saying that because sometimes the things that we think are going to happen aren't exactly what happened. You are more than your failures. You are more than your abnormalities. You're more than just being male or female. You have value, not because of what you can accomplish, not because of whether you are in perfect health or are the perfect symbol of manhood or womanhood, but because you have value. God made you with value. Okay, remember that there are some people who are born physically male that just have a very low uh, testosterone uh, drive le levels. So they have a very, you know, low drive. <laughs> and, you know, it's not that they're any less of men. It's just that they have that physical thing. So we remember that. Um, anyways, um, and you are made in the image of God, whether intersex, handicapped, or anything else. And I think that that's incredibly important. And in all of these things, as we struggle with trying to find out who we are, who we were made to be, remember that in your head, there's this big difference between you and the rest of the world. But in God's head, you are his child and he loves you. And it's that simple. So...